Today's science is next level. I'm going to apply this to my hair and see what happens. So today we are going to be color removing our hair using nothing but household goods. No bleach inside. Go. You've probably all heard this actually before because it's not uncommon to do this It's even done in hair salons when no harsh chemicals want to be used And it's also stuff that I've done and I've posted videos about it and everything today We're kind of going to get into the sciencey part of this today We're going to be using the anti-dandruff shampoo and vitamin C hair color removal method, which is one of the most insane hair techniques that I've ever discovered and I think it is so slept on or rather it doesn't get the appreciation that it deserves. It is a two ingredient formula. You apply onto your hair and it lifts hair color. But the only two ingredients that are used is shampoo and some vitamin C tablets. Let's get into it, make up the mixture and then I'm going to teach you all about why the hell this works and who can use it. Here's what we need. Vitamin C, 1000 milligram tablets. an anti-dandruff shampoo. I bought both of these from my pharmacy because they're very accessible. Now. Good for the body. We need to crush these into powder form. So here are some tools that I will use to get there. This beautiful paddle brush, Angelica. This beautiful paddle brush. Divina. The packaging of these brushes. Why not? That is surprisingly durable. S is for the stellar freaking brush. This thing is durable. Perfectly intact. I think that did a damn good job. The science behind this product is that it is incredibly well made. Like I wasn't joking when I said you can use this as a weapon. Now that we've got a little drug empire in our studio, it is time to go in with anti-dandruff shampoo. Now, as I mix this up, let me explain to you why we mix these two things together. One of my favorite traits in people are people who experiment with their trade, their careers, their hobbies, their homes, their whatever it is. People who tend to try new things and not just stick to the norms. And that is what we do on this channel. My particular area of trade is hair, everything that has to do with hair. And I personally like to try everything, even if it doesn't produce a desired effect. Through trial and error, I get to understand what happens and why it happened. And you can only really learn that true trying. Theory will only take you this far. Like in this video where I attempted to dye my hair coral but the end result turned out a lot more of a blood orange color. I had to try it in order to learn to then remix the formula, the ratios, the dyes, stuff like that and I only was able to acquire this knowledge through the experimentation of this thing. Now I am perfectly fine with experimenting. It fits my lifestyle and I'm able to then counteract it if something goes wrong or if something doesn't come out as intended because a I'm okay with that because I was experimenting and B, I have the tools to then rectify it. A lot of people, however, don't have that luxury in life and so they tend to watch videos like mine to see the process beforehand to then be able to use the knowledge that I gathered for their own scientific experiments because that's what I like to call hair experiment. Now that is one way to gather knowledge. You try things, you see what happens and then you take that knowledge. The second way is obviously to just learn it in a scientific way. Now the world of hair is is beautiful, vast, complex, and fairly scientifically backed. A lot of the times hair is seen as a creative 
career. It is a creative workforce. And a lot of the products tend to be more creative focused, like your very bright semi-permanent colors, your beautiful hair tools. It is a very beauty focused industry. But hair is also very scientific. And there are quite a few things that we can learn about hair in order for us to understand why hair and the products we put on it react the way it works. By the way, my name is Stella. Also, I'm sure you guys know me because you watch my videos. Hi, how are you doing? I woke up today and I'm like, today I'm going to be educating because I love experimenting, but my second favorite thing to do with hair is educate people so that they can learn because I fully behind the concept that the things that you have, that you can do yourself, you 100% should be able to do them. And I just wanna give you the tools to be able to do it yourself. I'm a very DIY type of a person. So, did you know that all hair is dead? The minute this hair exits the hair follicle that it is in, it is dead. The hair produced does not have any cells in it, living cells, it does not feel pain. The only thing that is attached to a nerve ending is the hair bulb, which is why it hurts when we pluck the hair from our head. That also means, however, that from the very moment we have hair on our head, from that point onwards, it immediately starts to degenerate because of the external forces that we have all around us. That means that all of the products, the treatments, the things that we avoid, the things that we do to our hair doesn't make our hair healthier, it just prevents it from breaking down quicker. Like when we tell you don't bleach your hair, it's not because it's going to damage the hair, it's only because it's going to damage the hair quicker. Or when we do our Brazilian treatments or our Botox treatments or our keratin treatments it is not making the hair any better it is simply coating the hair with products and treatments to prevent it from breaking down quicker because things like exposure to sun exposure to sea salt exposure to chlorine exposure to hair ties coloring bleaching perming all of those things are just going to wear down the hair quicker so our whole game and our whole life is just preventing our hair from breaking down faster than it would naturally that is why I always tell you I don't really care about hair health it, it's going to be bad anyways. It's dead. It's going to wear down the same way anything else is going to wear down. So experiment with it while you have it. It's gonna grow anyway. That's the one thing we can rely on. The only thing that can actually positively impact the way our hair grows is anything internal. Things we eat, how much we drink, the vitamins we take, hormones. It is, can also very negatively impact your hair. For instance, if you're on a very extreme diet or if you're malnourished, your blood that is carrying the keratin to produce the hair is not going to prioritize your hair or your nails or your skin it's going to focus on keeping your body alive so it is not uncommon for people on very strict diets or who are malnourished for their hair not to grow at all because our blood carries keratin deposits it there and that is how our hair grows same if we are pregnant or if we just had babies the hormones in our bodies can get so unbalanced or chaotic that it can completely affect the way our hair grows same if you've got a thyroid imbalance same if you're not taking the right vitamins that is the only thing that can actually impact the way your hair grows nothing external is going to do that now here is some more information before we get into today's actual video because it is exciting and i'm going to teach you a lot of fun things our hair is dead that being said it is made up of some very fun chemistry elements and some fun bonds a lot of the times we're most likely bombarded with words like overprocessed, bond building, um, chemical repair, cuticle, shaft. And all of the times we just take them on face value, but we don't really know what it means. Bond repair treatment, bond smoother, bond connector. The hell are these bonds? And what world does hair have bonds? Well, hair is actually made up of three types of bonds. Salt bonds, hydrogen bonds, and disulfide bonds. And these products all work to protect one of these bonds the disulfide bond. These are the bonds that are within the hair that usually make up the way our hair looks, normally in terms of curl pattern, wave patterns, and thickness. It is the, also the ones that when you break these bonds, it is very difficult to repair them. That is why a lot of these products are there called bond repair, bond smoother. We've got the whole Olaplex thing, was I think bond repair, bond maintenance, stuff like that. It is referring to repairing these disulfide bonds that is usually damaged when we bleach our hair, perm our hair, whatever. The Hydrogen bonds and the salt bonds can be broken and repaired very easily. These sulfide bonds, not so much. So that's what that word means. What about the pH of our hair? Our hair, believe it or not, is actually acidic. A lot of products usually use pH to get a certain effect. For instance, shampoos tend to be more alkaline in pH, believe it or not. That is because it needs the hair to open up 
the cuticle so that it can extract dirt, oils, deposits, debris, stuff like that. Conditioners, on the other hand, tend to be acidic, similar in pH value to our hair, so that it neutralizes the hair back to how it should be. That is why if you over damage your hair with bleach, which is very alkaline in nature, one of the best treatments that you can do to it is apple cider vinegar because it is very low in the pH scale. It is very similar to the hair's natural pH. If we then add this very acidic product back onto our hair, it neutralizes that bleaching effect and brings our hair closer to where it should be. Today, we're going to abuse the system a tiny bit because we are going to color remove our hair without using any bleaching products. We're going to science the shit out of it and we're also going to experiment a lot. The principal science behind anti-dandruff shampoo and crushed vitamin C mixed together to create a color remover is that the anti-dandruff shampoo opens up the hair cuticle because it is very alkaline in nature. Most anti-dandruff shampoos tend to be higher than a 5.5 in pH, meaning that they are way more alkaline than the hair's natural pH. So this swells up the hair and opens up the cuticle. The vitamin C, on the other hand, goes in and actually extracts the hair color. When mixing this up, there's probably a formula they can use, but I'll be fully honest, I haven't done this long enough to know what the perfect formula is, how many pills you should do, so we're trial and erroring it. So this is it, this is our mixture. Shampoos tend to be alkaline in nature. That is what makes a good shampoo, so to speak. There are then obviously the classic things that we look out for, sulfate-free, bond repair, stuff like that. But pH also plays a very important role in shampoos. This one tends to have a pH higher than our hair's natural pH. That is kind of key for most shampoos because it opens up the cuticle. Look at me being all educational. Now it is time to simply wash our hair with this. So let me get into my garb and show you how to do it. Because I'm filming this and I respect you guys, I'm going to do it here in my well-lit studio. However, I would personally recommend you do this not somewhere where you care about because it can get messy. I'm going to wet my hair using a spray bottle. Feel free to do this like you're actually going to wash your hair. I put on you guys' favorite shirt. We're going to apply this to our hair. I love this hair color, but it also gave me an idea for an even cooler hair look. So I want to just lighten this as much as it can go without using bleach. It should be enough for now. I'm going to spray as I go along. Mmm, I'm gonna have so much fun cleaning this place. I think I need to wet it a bit more. First thing I would recommend, add more shampoo than I did and less vitamin C than I did. You're welcome. I'm gonna go wet my head and then start to lather. Give me a second. Mmm, baking. So I can already see that the hair color is much softer. It was kind of more of a vibrant red. Now it's definitely like a soft peachy thing. I'm going to leave this on for probably around 20 minutes. Let this kind of dry out, re-wet it, and then re-lather to kind of really start breaking out that pigment. Is my hair long enough to do this? Look, it looks like I have a bun on the top of my head. Anyways, I'm gonna leave this on for quite a few minutes until it probably dries out. Then just continue working this into the hair and really loosen that red pigment. This does work also on permanent hair colors, which is probably my favorite fact ever. I feel disgusting though, so I'm gonna go wash and uh, come back when it's time to re-lather. It already looks 
lighter in color. Like if I do a development test where I wipe away the product, it does look lighter. So. I'm gonna go wash this off, condition it, and then come back and see if it needs another one or if I'm satisfied with how much pigment was taken out in just this one singular application. I'll be right back. This is what my hair looks like after one shampooing. It definitely looks less red and more copper coming out. However, I wanna see if I can take out even more pigment and not just what it did now. So I'm gonna use up what's left of our fun little mixture and do this one more time. I'm gonna go rinse this off and show you the very final look. Vitamin C and anti-dandruff shampoo are the perfect combination to remove the bulk of the pigment from your hair. It won't get your hair bleach yellow and it won't remove all the pigment, but it'll get you close enough for you to be able to go to a completely different color without using particularly harsh chemicals, just household goods. How cute is this though? Can we keep in mind that the original color was fiercely bright blood orange red. Eventually that faded to what I had this morning, which was still a particularly very red hair. And now I think it's like the perfect gentle copper, very similar to how I had it when I dyed it, this like kind of dusty copper color. It was fantastic and it's one of my favorite colors because it is so soothing and calming and it isn't anything like crazy or chaotic. It is just sweet, mature and floral. That's what happens when you know what to use and when to use it. When you know the signs behind how something works and on the surface that you're going to be applying it on, you can better understand what is going to happen and it's going to lead you to get to your results in a better and clearer way. If you don't know it, don't worry. I'm here to teach it to you and I'm here to show you my experiences so that hopefully it can become your experiences and you can all kind of learn together. You can recommend things to me. I get to try them out and we can all kind of see what happens. It's one of my favorite colors though. Oh my God, look how cute this is. It's like a beautiful dusty rose color. You can very much tell that um, the hair underneath is copper, but there's the tiniest hint of residual pinky reds that kind of turns it into this really fun kind of copper color. I love it. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, let's learn a thing or two together. And comment down below what you want to learn because I'm eager to try it with you. <sighs> Every single product that I use is going to be down below. However, for the most part, it genuinely was just household items. Vitamin C pills, your anti-dandruff shampoo, and a damn good brush to smash it because, well, I have a hammer. It just, it's not as cute. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll give it a go and I will see you on my next video. Bye.